Welcome to the Philippines and welcome to Continuum this week. And we're going to talk about some of the breakthroughs and the keys to breakthrough. You know that when we push and we give it all we got, we are going to get the results that we expected. Today we're going to talk about some awesome things that are happening in this nation and across the nations of Asia as we make the jump this year into the fullness of what God wants us to see and do. today you're watching Continuum and I'm with Rich Conte again our apostolic leader of uh, Victory Churches of Asia in Manila and uh, it's good to be together with you Rich and we've just been doing a whole bunch of stuff eh? Yeah. Conference, uh, your seventh anniversary yep. of the Manila Church, Fairview Church and uh, what else do we do? Some leadership training and uh, just generally getting together and hanging out that's the best part of it all. <laughs> Tell us how the conference went, first of all, and what you see coming out of that. Yeah, the conference was uh, just amazing, Al. Uh, it was the, really the best conference we ever had, mm -hmm. and I'm not just saying that, it yeah. really was. It was just top notch, and uh, all of our guys, uh, they were working hard, you know, to make the thing uh, uh, come across the way it did, and it was a tremendous anointing, tremendous anointing, tremendous enthusiasm, tremendous excitement. Yeah. Um, just, uh, it was the best ever. It yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah, it really was. It really yeah. was. I mean, you guys are getting good at it, too, and there's no doubt about it. You know, as we, we do more conferences, of course, everybody gets... Uh, gets a little better every yeah, time. Sure, yeah, sure, more efficient and stuff, and that's really exciting. And, uh, and and that does something, too, for your team. Sure it does, right? yeah. they, they, They're feeling really pumped about this. Yeah. And uh, you, you look at them all, and you see probably, I would say, potential that you've never seen before. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, when we're looking at, at something like where's the ministry going from here? Hmm. I mean, obviously, as a leader, that's what you're looking at. Who are the potential leaders? Yeah. And uh, so, so how do you feel about, about your leadership at this point in the game? Yeah, I think that uh, this, these things are really challenging more and more, and they're, mm -hmm. I think they're getting ready to go up a notch, you know? Yeah. Or maybe a couple of notches, really. Sure, sure. Yeah, we feel like, uh, we feel like we've been in a, at a certain level for the last past year, uh -huh. but it's about time God's... Uh, uh, like the eagle getting the getting the the eaglets out of the nest, you know. Sure, it's yeah, about time yeah. that we really fly. Right. And uh, and the thing is that uh, I feel like our guys are rising to it, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and this conference has just been uh, a, ca a real catalyst. Right. For for the coming year, mm -hmm. we are believing God now for uh, 2011. We we just really believe that 2011 is going to be our, our greatest year of uh, of numerical growth. Right. Right. We just really feel like that's what God is speaking. Sure. And obviously. Uh, when you go to new levels like that, mm -hmm. uh, the leadership has to go to new levels. Yes. You can't, you can't stay at the level of leadership that you are and expect for the ministry to, to, to expand. Right. And so I think everybody's getting the idea, finally getting the idea that, you know, if we really want to see this thing take off mm -hmm. like God wants to see yeah. happen, we've yeah. all got to come to new levels. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And really the word at the conference, the prophetic direction, yeah. prophetic word, is increase. Yeah. You know, above all that we can ask or yeah. think, levels of increase. And, um, you know, I wish you could be here because this conference is just, just really is absolutely amazing and you've got to catch the flavor. But, but let's go and have a look at the conference, uh, some of the words that are coming out and uh, some of the action and the activity and you'll see why everybody is so excited.
Jesus makes us come together in unity and harmony. Gives us a love one for another. Amen. He can break down all the prejudice, doesn't he? A Christianity breaks down all of the prejudice and causes us to realize that we are all created in the image of Christ. Unity. God puts you on a team and you've got to learn how to work together with people different from yourself. See that now, that unity in diversity. Our nations are different. Our churches are different. I mean, all of the churches are not like the one in Manila, right here in the Philippines, are they? I mean, you got all, I mean, I've visited some of your churches. All the pastors are different. All the churches are different. But you know what? You come together to work in unity. And iron sharpens iron. And you draw from one another. And you come together based on your strengths. And through coming together based on your strengths, you all become better. All in rank, nobody breaking rank. I believe these next, this next five years, ten years, is a time of advancement. We are a covenant family that's knit together by the blood of Jesus and a purpose that's bigger than any one of us. This is the kind of unity that you need in a church. Unity of purpose. Unity in diversity. You're all different. Unity under attack. Devil wants to attack us. Wants to get us one against another. Causing division, fighting against us. Getting this one against this one. So God is looking for devout people who can bring divine order and declare the wonderful things of God that are going to happen in the church and in the families and in the marriages and in our individual lives, in our children, in our grandchildren. Talking about devotion, it makes us people that God can trust, that God can use. And he looks, it says, his eyes to and fro throughout the whole earth to see if there's a man that walks uprightly before him that he can show his power through. He can trust his power with a devout man, with a devout woman. He'll trust you with his power, the power of Almighty God. He will trust it. He will put it in this earthen vessel so that the excellency of that power would be of God and not of ourselves. Being a devout man or woman is what will get you the favor of God. And not only that, it'll gain you the favor of those around you. It'll gain you the favor of your leaders. Man, I favor the devout people in our ministry. You better please the Father. Uh, and then you get the Father's goods. You get all the Father's blessing if you please the Father. See, God's looking for devout men and women. He's looking at our hearts, right? Devout men get the Holy Ghost. Huh? Devout men get the anointings and the blessings of God. They get the prosperity of God. They get the understanding and the revelation of God. God's not going to give his revelation to someone who's not devout. The eyes of our understanding be enlightened. that we have that spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. Continua Media is online to get you connected with your Great Commission destiny. Subscribe to our channels on YouTube and Tangle. Add us up on Facebook. Subscribe to our podcasts. And of course, check out our website, ContinuaMedia.com. Watch episodes. Catch up with the latest missions news around Asia. Download tons of missions resources, like Dr. Al's CLR training materials. And get our monthly newsletter right in your inbox. And find out how you can get involved in God's Great Commission. Stay connected with us, and we'll take you there. As well as the conference we've been uh, participating in and really enjoying the, uh, the church anniversary, which is seven years now. And, of course, we love to reminisce and look back at when you first planted the church, and we were here with the team from Thailand. And, yeah. and I tell you, you know, it was life-changing for us yeah. to see that opening service with 450 people. Um, you know, after you guys did so much work in the theater, and you're still in the same theater today. Yeah, but five so, services you know, now. You know, five services, yeah. and they're packed. I mean, we were yeah. to the rafters here. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so there is an anticipation. i got to say, you know, like, as a leader, you deal with stuff, and you deal with the nitty-gritty on the day-to-day -day basis. But when you hit a conference like this, that is all, in a sense, forgotten even, and, and, and you see the focus, yeah. right, of your leaders, and yeah. they're turning towards something bigger and better and, and uh, 
let's talk about what we see in the future for the, for the for the local church first, and then for the ministry as a whole. Yeah. Well, we'd like to see our church. Uh, uh, we, we have five services right now. We're just mm -hmm. believing God by the end of December that every one of those services will be filled to capacity. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be having a meeting in two weeks with all of our ushers and, and children's ministry and Marshall's guys, and saying, "Look, mm -hmm. you saw how the." anniversary was mm -hmm. it's going to be like that every Sunday right so you've got to be ready yeah. and of course that involves as well uh, connecting people in the cell groups small groups I think we've got about 200 cell groups now we need, that needs to be four or five hundred right. cell groups to, uh -huh. to really connect people mm -hmm. we, we want to we don't want to just have crowds mm -hmm. we want to make disciples Certainly. we want people's lives to be changed and so uh, again all of your leaders have got to rise up to, mm -hmm. to rise that to uh, uh, to handle larger numbers of people and be sure that people are really being ministered to on the way home here last night to look at your little piece of land there. Yeah. Um, that's very exciting. I, I know when you begin a church like that, you're looking at somewhere down the road, yeah, we're going to get into the, the buying the land and building the buildings. But uh, And as you say, by December, you guys would be busting at the seams. Yeah. And that's a very uh, solid and reasonable faith goal and prediction. Mm -hmm. And um, there is coming a time here where you're going to need to, to really step out. And so tell us what, what your options are for land. What's it like in the Philippines, in Manila, to yeah. buy a piece of land and, and build a church? Yeah, what's surprising is that in Manila, the, the land, they said at one time land was more expensive than in New York City. Wow. You know, we're in a third world country. Yeah. Uh, so you wouldn't think that land would be that expensive. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, the fact is it's, uh, it's supply and demand. Right. We've got 90 million people maybe in the size of Alberta, you sure, know? Sure, sure. And it's just wall of all people. And so land is very expensive. Uh, right now we're looking at a piece of property that is uh, a little bit over two acres mm -hmm. uh, large, and uh, they want $2.2 million for it. And that's actually a bargain yeah, price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. that's what we were looking at some of the other land, and that's like about a quarter of what they're charging for smaller lots. That's right, yeah. Right. So that, that really is probably reasonable but again you're looking at a real step of faith here obviously yeah I mean you this this is a, a Filipino church right? yeah. <laughs> this, yeah. this is not New York businessman here. yeah and and so we're re definitely looking at a real a real jump in faith and a real it's like a miracle yeah. it tapped absolutely yeah. but then that's what we like isn't it we got a God that does miracles <laughs> don't we you know amen yeah we like the miracle <laughs> yeah. level of, of, yeah. of stuff and so and I think you know you see the whole picture of the ministry and we're looking at that you know you got you're looking at a miracle for land you're looking at a miracle in growth that you're already seeing so many signs of I mean you got a church that grew from first Sunday to four from 450 to now you've got 1600 regular attenders yeah. and um, what was there at the anniversary over 2000 uh, about 2500 probably about 2500 yeah. I mean you know that's a pretty good Sunday yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for a seven-year-old church yeah and um, so we are talking about miracle levels of growth and and uh, and then miracle levels of influence and leadership training and uh, you know I mean it does uh, we always bring guys from Thailand here to have a look hey come and have a look at what's going on in the Philippines you guys are gonna love this you know uh, you know what revival looks like right when yeah. you're when you're hanging around with you guys Yeah, it was really neat. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had a meeting with all of our leaders, and uh, uh, again, we're just recasting the vision for a, for a church of 10,000. And and one of our leaders spoke up. Actually, the worship leader spoke up.